And my love from him is, is, is conscious to me because of how much he loves me. He said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And I've accepted you in the beloved. So because I loved you, not just at the point of salvation, for God so loved the world, but I loved you even at the point of elevation because your love for me has given you the framework to be obedient to me. So now you're obedient to God. Everything you do with your money, with your marriage, with your parenting, with your health, with your spiritual devotion, with, with your business, with your career, with your philanthropy, with your humanitarian community efforts, everything you do in every area of your life, you're doing it in obedience because you want to do things God's way, not for stuff, but from love. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Huh? Yes. So I'm not doing this for you, God, because I want a nicer car. I'm not doing this for you because I want a couple extra gifts under the Christmas tree. God, I'm doing this for you just because. Come on, class. Because I, I, I love you. Yeah. Somebody say, I love him. I love, I love him. him. Now say, that's enough, that's enough. For, me for me to do everything I do, everything I do. In, obedience to him. in obedience to him. I mean, we can actually put a period behind that statement. Yes. There's no need for commas. Colons or semicolons. No dashes. No slashes. I do everything I do for him and do it his way simply because I God, I love you. Yes. And because I love you, I can do what I do for you and do it your way. And the first proof of concept that my obedience to you comes from a place of my love for you, the first proof of concept is, I've got to trust you. Yes. Isn't it amazing before God gets you to do anything, he tells you, first proof of concept, let me make sure you trust me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And i got to make sure your trust runs so deep because when the enemy comes in as a flood, there has to be something deeper than just a clap of your hands or a song you sing or a scripture you memorize. There has to be something so deep that although it looks so dark, you still see light at the end of the yeah, tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Because now my trust comes from delighting myself in him. I just love God what you allow me to go through. Right, right, right. So when I'm broke, I'm not actually broke. It's just an opportunity for me to show him that my trust runs deeper than my financial status. When I'm in a transition and I'm looking for work and I can't find a job, I can prove to you that the proof of concept is not you giving me a better job, but you making sure I don't skip a meal while I go through my process. That's my first proof of concept. You got to get that. Those of you that were here for our pep rally, keep in mind, if I want to do something today that I'm unwilling to do three years from now, I shouldn't want to do it because it might not be him. Because if it's him that's giving me the capacity to do it today, it'll be him giving me the capacity to do it three years from now. The only difference is I'll be stronger, wiser, and a better version of myself three years from now than I am today and might realize it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. So love is a framework. Trust is, how many of you remember last week? Trust is the... Nobody's getting passes. Love is the framework. You got to get it. Repetition is the law of remembrance. Huh? Tr obedience is the footwork. And these two working together creates a spiritual transaction which positions you to move into trust which is a spiritual transfer. Are you with me? This is all about getting you in the flow. This is all about getting you in the flow. This is all about getting you in the flow. Because when you hear the rhythm of his revelation you will not live like some of you dance off beat. <laughs> I want to be in sync 
with God. So when he steps, I step. When he stops, I stop. I want to get in the flow. Write this down. I told you, the technology issue is mine. But it's all good. Trust which is the spiritual transfer of love and obedience, is the glue that holds all things together and gives them the strength they need to excel. You never graduate from trusting in God. The only thing that happens is he trains you to trust him for the next level. All right. So if I cannot trust him where I am, I cannot trust him where he wants me to be. All right. But trust, which is the spiritual transfer of love and obedience. Did you catch that? It is the glue that holds all things together and gives them the strength they need to excel. So every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life, any area of your life that you can consciously identify with, that aspect or that area works cohesively together with other aspects or areas and trust is the glue that holds them together and gives them strength so that they can continue to excel. And that might not mean too much to some of you, but for about five of you, what that means for you, don't miss it, is that there is nothing God has put in your hand that has the power to be pulled out of your life. There are some things if you wanted to give up, you couldn't give up because God has glued them to who you are. I wish I had some members today. Yes. Let me give you some examples then. Exhibit A. No matter how broke you are, you always find in the bank account of your spirit a reason to give God some praise. Yes. You can be so depressed at the point of wanting to commit suicide in life into your spirit and get you a second wind. Because whatever God has given to you right where you are that he knows is going to be fuel to get you to where he wants you to be has been glued to you and it becomes the strength for you to keep moving in the direction of your destiny. Some of you like, I don't see how I found the way to get up this morning. It was the glue that your trust in him created. And notice what he does. He creates this glue trust in most cases when things are not looking good. When your back is up against the wall. When you're just ready for Jesus to get like Santa Claus and just come through the chimney and drop something in your lap. He says, I know I can do it, but I choose not to do it. Not because I want to disappoint you, but because I want to show you another deliverance. I want to show you another mode of operation. So I want you to catch that. Trust, the spiritual transfer of love and obedience is the glue that holds all things together, ladies and gentlemen. And gives them strength or the strength they need to excel. Now this brings me to how, how we're going to begin this process of getting in the floor. And I want to walk you through this because in chapter 1, paragraph 1 of your books, page 13, for my astute book readers, here's what is written. One of the most amazing discoveries you will ever make in your life is the discovery of who you actually are on the inside. Mm -hmm. Social experts refer to this discovery, don't miss this, as self-awareness. You might want to write that word down. It's actually two words. Self-awareness. 
self-awareness, which suggests that you possess a unique comfort in the true you. I know you've already read, read that before, you, but you probably didn't understand it. And an unmatched capacity for what you do. Write down the, the words self-awareness and beside or somewhere around self-awareness, I want you to write two things. First thing I want you to write is I am. That's an identity statement. Yes, yes. It's an identity statement. Watch this. Don't miss it. Not just for your humanity, but for his divinity. Yes. So there is absolutely no way I can become self-aware if I do not tap into. You missed it. I am not just who I am in my humanity. But for who I am is in his divinity. Yes, 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 yes. Most people, watch this, are not self-aware. Not because they don't know who they are. They don't know who he is. Because right, 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 right. right. if you're made in his image and after his likeness and you don't know him, you will never know you. Right. Amen. Amen. Because you have never been able to tap into a deeper dimension of the identity beyond your humanity, which extracts his divinity. Right. Self-awareness is another word, a phrase for what? I am. I am. Here's another one that's getting ready to really rock your boat today. God-like. Mm. Mm. If you read that together, it says, I am. I told you. Hold up your britches like grandma said. I am. God like. See, some of you can't handle it because you're too human. And everything you do is by means of humanity. But if you shift it into the means of divinity, it will be a holy ease. Because you will recognize any friction that manifests is friction that is designed to get you out of the flow of your divine identity. Everything you're going through right now is trying to convince you that you are not God-like. You are so broke, God can't be nowhere around you. You are so flawed, there is absolutely no way God is working in you. That's what makes him as much of an amazing God as he is. Because as broke as I am, as flawed as I am, he still maneuvers my life to use me so he can get the glory. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody here today that has seen God use you in a way that you knew absolutely positively you couldn't have used yourself that way? And it was his way of showing you, despite your humanity, I can still inject you with my divinity and get glory out of your situation. Somebody say, whatever I'm in, God's going to get glory from That's why you shouldn't be worrying about death. That's why you shouldn't be complaining about people. That's why you shouldn't be concerned about enemies. Because everything you in, God's going to get glory from Woo! What you say? Martha and Mary, this sickness, Lazarus, is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. So I might have to sit in the grave and stink a few days. But when he raises me up, something on the inside is going to manifest on the outside for him to get the glory. I don't want to work at you early, but just nudge somebody and tell them God's going to get glory out of that thing. That's why you got to shout and praise him and give him thanks and appreciation for every obstacle, I'm sorry, opportunity he allows you to experience because God is going to get the glory out of that bankruptcy. God is going to get the glory out of that debt. God is going to get the glory out of that unemployment. God is going to get the glory out of that diagnosis. God is going to get the glory out of that depression. God is going to get the glory out of people walking away from you and betraying you. And don't wait until the glory shows. He's going to get the glory out of my life. 
God, I'm talking up for somebody today. Deep down in your spirit, you're saying, I'm tired of complaining. I'm tired of going through the same cycle. I'm tired of struggling. And I'm upset about the way life is. And I'm frustrated. And I'm angry. And I'm bitter. God said, I'm still going to get the glory. No matter how bad it looks, I'm going to get the glory out of your life. Why you want all this to go? Yes. You deserve it. Yes. God, I'm talking to about five people today. Yes. God, why you want all this going? You deserve it. Because when you were dying in sin, I saved you. You deserve it. Because when you were broke and didn't have a pot to put it in, oh, when did it throw it out? I made a way. I made a way. You deserve the glory. Because when I was bound by sin and struggles, you delivered me and brought me out. Can I get five people to give God glory? Wow. Man, I'm about to lose all y'all today. I'm up here having church all by myself. Why not give you glory for my enemy? I give you glory for my pain. I got up on shelter. I give you glory for my problems. I give you glory for demon opposition.
constricted is about to flow in your direction. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. And it adds no sign getting the flow. Which suggests that I am possessed yes. with the unique yes. 
better highlight it. All right. Uh -huh. What does that mean, Rev? I know how to rest in it. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Jesus. Flaws and all. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I possess a unique comfort in the true me. Who, who is the true me? The true me is the godly me. Yes, sir. The true me is the like God me, the God like me. The me that recognizes my divinity despite flaws of humanity. You got that? So I possess a unique comfort in the true me and just get ready to just push you right off the cliff. An unmatched capacity for what I do. Ooh. If there's any competition that's going on, it's me competing with the potential me. I'm so passionate about being the next best version of me, I actually don't have time for other people. Because my capacity is unmatched. You can dress like me, talk like me, play like me, give like me. The problem is you would never touch somebody and tell them I am who I am. That means I am all God wanted me to be. Watch this, paragraph two, page 13. Mm -hmm. You'll catch it Tuesday by three. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness mm -hmm. is according to Greek language, metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. When I am self-aware, yeah. that means there had to be a previous yeah. metamorphosis that took place in my entire life. Yes, 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 yes. That means God took a nobody, right. morphed him no. into a somebody yes. to show everybody yes. what he can do to anybody who would put themselves in a position to act like they daddy. Because God don't want nobody to lose somebody in this room.
David said, morph me, God. I'm sorry. Create in me a clean heart. When that goes shot out, renew the right spirit in me. Let me be so more that when people go up on me in my face, I just laugh. Let me be so more that I know people don't like me and I still hug them anyway. Let me be so more good God on my People to jump to your feet and just do this. He, I ain't break dancing. I'm just showing you how he's morphing my spirit. He's anointing me for a million dollar business. He's morphing me for a global ministry. He says that if you let me morph you, make you over, I'll take you to places your eyes have never seen. Your ears have never heard. Good God Almighty, somebody let him morph you. nature of your being goes through a metamorphosis to connect with the immaterial part of your being and you shift from time into eternity and you are morphed into who you originally were before time began. Come on. That was for free. Self-awareness is a metamorphosis which refers to a process that leads to the life, to the, to the, to the progressive permanent change in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get it twisted. This change uh, doesn't just change you. Yeah. All right. But it, it, it forces a change in your circumstances. All right. That's good. When anything dies, the ecosystem from which it died in smells different. All right. It looks different. Because when God gets you in the flow today, you won't go home who you came here as. Self-awareness is a metamorphosis. And Pastor, you're going to really have to exegete this. Because Paul says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I beseech you. It's a real deep biblical word for, I'm begging you. All right. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'm pleading with you. Please hear me out. He said, I, I, I beg you, brethren, is a neutral term. There is no gender specific to brethren. We are collectively brethren. So Paul says, in order for this to work, don't miss what we said last week. 
following the email, Paul is suggesting very clearly, in order for this to work, you have to be in a culture that breeds metamorphosis. All right, now. If you are around conservative people, you will become a conservative person. If you are around lazy people, I'll turn this way for that. That's right. That's true. That's true. At the very least, you will try to make sense mm. of becoming lazy. <laughs> so Paul says, brothers and sisters, oh, come on. you live in a culture, Rome. You are in an ecosystem, mm -hmm. the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. where all roads lead to you. <laughs> because while you're wanting to be like them, they secretly want to get like you. Because they don't understand that they are your boss and you have better ideas than them. Oh, I just lost some money. They don't understand they've been saved 40 years. You've been just right four months and it seems like your life is moving at a faster pace. He said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God. Yeah. Amplified version says, uh -huh, I beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. Notice what he says. To make a decisive, decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as, as a living sacrifice. This is so fascinating because Paul is actually spiritually suggesting to them that you should to some extent commit selfish suicide. Mm. You're going to catch that later. <laughs> you, you, you should be so obsessed with the new you mm. that you're willing to kill the old you. All right, man. Yeah. You, you, you should be so radical All right now. that you got kamikaze kind of faith. All right now. Yeah. That you don't drive up to the church and walk up in the doors. You fly in head first. Because if nobody leaves the sanctuary delivered crazy, you going to get it. If nobody leaves the church with a blessing, oh radical, you going to leave with one. And I know I'm throwing some people off because this just your traditional service. But I want to talk about 15 of you that says, I'm getting ready to be morphed in a new me. I walked through the door when I came in. But I'm getting ready to slip through the walls when I go out. He says, I want you. He says, I want you to bring you to the altar. Yeah, I want you to present. I want you to become the greatest gift of all. And that is becoming a living sacrifice. Don't miss the undercurrent. A living sacrifice. Any sacrifice that's given doesn't come out alive. But Paul says, except you. Because if you knew the last relationship was a sacrifice, you would have checked out too early before you learned your lesson. All right. <laughs> I sacrificed a year of your time on the altar of my relationship with you. I sacrificed this last season mm -hmm. so that you can come out living from what other people died in. He says, and by the way, just in case you missed the revelation, this type of selfish, suicidal, radical, kamikaze kind of sacrifice is actually the least you can do. The King 
James says, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. In other words, you ain't even doing me no favors doing that. All right, now. Uh -huh. Because it's what happens after I accept the new you as the sacrifice. Right. Right. Throw you off, he says. He says, but I'm going to show you an easy route to take mm -hmm. so that you don't let paying tithes and giving offerings but never seeing no return throw you off. All right now. Give you an easy route to take so that you don't think you're being overlooked and people don't feel you no more. Right. You've lost the oil. Mm. He said, I want to show you something. He said, don't be conformed. Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed. I'm working with you now. Uh -huh. Don't be conformed. Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed. Mm -hmm. Huh? Watch this. I'll help you. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed mm -hmm. to like we're in English class today. <laughs> don't, don't let the world and the culture and the ecosystems outside of this ecosystem form you into a con. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't start conning your way out. All right, all right, Making right. it look like you're going through. All right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. He says, don't be conformed to this culture. All right. mm -hmm. Quick footnote. About five of you, when you join the church, you're actually being introduced to your new season and the new culture that God is going to take you through your new season. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. You see? All right. He says, and don't be conformed. Don't don't be formed into a con artist. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try to finesse your way out of a context that I've forced you in. Because mm -hmm. nothing is gonna get your attention like that. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, don't be conformed to this age. Mm -hmm. Don't be, you read the amplified, fashioned after. And adapted to its external, superficial customs. Mm -hmm. He says, but what I want you to be is not conformed, but I want you to be transformed. Come on. Come on. That's good. Yeah. I want you to go into a trance mm -hmm. so I can beam you up <laughs> and take you further quicker with less help. I want to show you, I got to make it practical, what I can do with minimum wage. I want to show you how I can manifest in the life of a person who has nothing to lose. He says that this will happen by, are you reading it? The renewal of your mind. By its new ideals and its new attitude. I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to shout by myself right now. I'm, I'm getting ready to shout by myself right now. Because some of you ain't even read the last clause. Come, come get the chair because I'm about to throw the chair in the horses. All right now. All right now. Okay. Huh? All right. He's, he, he's, he says, he says, all of this. All of it. You missed it? In the flow. Because when I get you in the flow, you're going to become a part of the flow. And I'm going to show you results from the flow. Touch my tip. God's about to do it for me. He says, I'm doing all of this. Don't. The last clause in verse 2. So that you may. Does it say may? It don't say pastor may do it. Oh, just may. So that you what? May. Carries a probability. He says so that you may probably. Do what I'm about to show you that's going to get done. He 
said, I do all of this to get you in the flow that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You just missed it. The operative word, ladies and gentlemen, and this is where you should shout, is prove. Why do you want me to get in the flow? So you can prove what my will looks like. Why do you want me to go through pain and pressure? So you can prove what my will looks like. Why did I have to downsize for a season? So you can prove educate some of y'all because uh, the word prove All right. P-R-O-V-E comes from a compound Latin structure compound meaning two words structured together to bring forth one meaning prove comes from the prefix pro or professional O-V-E comes from move, which means to go ahead. <laughs> All right now. Come on. So when God says, I have to get you in the flow All right now. so you can prove, watch this, what he's suggesting is, I've got to make you a pro All right. at getting ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Tag somebody and tell them, your next move is a pro move. Your enemies ain't going to see how it happens. Your bank account ain't going to be the contributor factor for it happening. God told me to tell 15 of you your next move is going to be up. Now, y'all know my wife and I, we're in real estate, right? Right. And uh, she has some profound relationships uh, with managers and individuals who are in high positions at the company Pro Move. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't miss it. Mm -hmm. Pro Move. What uh -huh. you're about to make. Yeah. All right. yes. Pro Move uh -huh. is designed to go before you. All right. Uh -huh to work out all the issues, uh -huh. yeah. especially when your past credit has challenges. God, I'm talking to some people today. So where you were unable to walk into the apartment complex and get a lease approved on your own, there are professionals who have been positioned in your life to make a move to go before you. So by the time you show up to the complex, your name, God, who am I talking to, has already been accepted. And I just came by here this Sunday afternoon to let 15 of you know that God has sent angels on a pro move for you. Whatever you've been crying about, whatever you've been praying about, God says, I just want you to show up.
Where there was issues in 